Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our second panel. Let me introduce my first guest, David. Good evening. Thank Good evening. you. Yeah. Do you want to say a few things about you so that everybody can know your background? I know it's a long bio. I didn't want to read it, but go ahead. I'll try to shorten it. Well, first of all, my, my friend here to my right, Mahesh, and I are both from the city of Fremont. So you have a Fremont panel this evening, Fremont, California. And currently, I'm on the city council of Fremont. And I'm also an attorney with Bernard Bogley and Montecorsi LLP. But I've been involved probably in Fremont with various community activities for more than 30 years in a variety of leadership positions. I think one of the first that I'd like to talk about was back in 2002 when I was the co-chair of a measure that raised money for our schools. And uh, we have some school board trustees. Having bond measures pass is really a difficult conversation with the community because you're asking them to pay and invest in our schools. And we had had the unfortunate circumstance of the prior bond failing. So it was an opportunity for me as a co-chair, long before I was in, in council or in any other position, to try to reach out to the community for those that were in support of the last time and said, how can you support it this time? What are we going to do right? How can we have credibility with the voters? And so that's part of leadership is having a conversation, establishing credibility. So that's one of many things that I'd like to talk about, but I've been on the, the commission, uh, on the city council since uh, February of last year. And before that, I was on the planning commission for 10 years. And before I forget, I love the model that I learned this evening, being round on the outside and square on the inside. Well, one of the things about being a council member or being a planning commissioner is that that square in terms of integrity and principles and values are rooted in our general plan for the city. So sometimes we're asked to do things that are unpopular, but if they are rooted in our general plan, it's like our constitution, we have to somehow, we have to listen to the staff and listen to our general plan, even if there are people opposed to it, and that takes courage. So that's part of the leadership is that it's not always being popular, but taking hard positions, recognizing there's gonna be people that are upset, and yet trying to be firm and try to educate as to why you're doing what you're doing. So we'll talk, we'll have a longer conversation, but that's my introduction. Very good, thank you. How about Mahesh? Do you, th thanks, do you think you look easier than David or you yeah, are? Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks, David. And uh, I also like to thank uh, Diana Ding uh, for having me over. She is uh, an amazing person. And uh, I just want to tell you that I'm a little different than all the panelists that you saw and now. <laughs> I'm not an elected member. And I'd like to answer, your question was a very good question. <laughs> I'd like to answer to that. I'm a community worker. Like, like Diana Ding also does a lot of community work. We do not aspire to be elected, but we want to make sure our elected members stand, do the job that they're elected for. So it did not, you did not get elected to be a leader. You can be, if you believe in something, you need to follow through. Like Maoyan did that, followed up, went to China and followed all the skates. So you have to believe in something, and that is your civic duty. Because you are in America, the largest, the oldest democracy in the world, that gives you the power for any citizen here to do one thing, that's vote. Because that's your power. If you are engaged in your civic duties and you're ready to vote, you will understand the issues. When you understand the issues and you can talk to two of your friends, because you're not an elected member, you'll get a real pulse of what's happening and you believe in that and follow that. And I think uh, that's what I do. I've been work, uh, doing uh, community work for the last 26 years, and I believe in something, and I, I'm not, like, I follow that. If they're, they're, the elected members and the person who's standing for election is in line with our thoughts as you citizens or kids, right? You are going to be the future leader, so it's very important that you understand your civic duties and exercise your vote. Thank you. Yeah, excellent, definitely. Um, you run your successful business as well, right? Uh, Actually, I don't right now. I do. I work for Amazon, uh, and uh, I work in Cupertino, and uh, that you know Amazon. So, okay, very good. Yeah. Let me give the microphone to the kids. Uh, do you mind tell me what's your name and why you are here today? Uh, my name is James, and today I'm here to listen to interesting viewpoints about uh, civic leadership and uh, leadership positions in the government as well. 
Hi, my name is Gisela, and I'm here to learn about different leadership positions and how to grow up to become a better leader. Um, my name is Sophia, and um, I'm here because my dad brought me here. <laughs> uh, my name is William, and I'm here to learn about the commitment you need to be a good leader. Uh, my name is Joseph, and I'm here because I just want to learn about you guys and how this leadership has really advanced your careers. Okay, so first of all, I need to thank Sophia's dad. Where is Sophia's, where is Sophia's dad? Thank you very much for bringing her. You are sixth grader, right? Okay, do you have some question for David and Mahash? Uh, um, here's the microphone. Um, have you had like um, any times where people disagreed with what you did? Everybody always agrees with me 100% of the time. <laughs> Good luck, David. No, no, that's not true. I'm living in a fantasy if that were true. One of the things I wanted to mention is not only do people oppose you, but because of Facebook and other mediums, they're publicizing that they disagree with you. And sometimes you even have that from fellow council members, and they have a lot of followers. So that's a real challenge. This, how do you deal with people that disagree with you, and how do you have that conversation? I agree with... Uh, Anjali's comments earlier that you really should, as a council or as a school board, once you make a decision, support that. But that's not true for all school boards and councils. There's sometimes people within the council that say, well, I was right. I may have been the only vote against everything, but I'm still right. And you have to deal with that. But let me just answer a different question that you didn't ask. Nobody has mentioned social media tonight. Okay. One of, my daughter is 14 years old, so she's on Snapchat. She's your age, okay? <laughs> I think one of the important things about leadership is, is get rid of the phone. Have conversations, have, meet people. Don't forget how to do that. I think the, the real challenge for your age is that you're gonna get lost in social media. Having a WeChat forum or a Facebook group is not leadership. Leadership is actually being out in the community, talking to people, going to decision makers and making things happen. So I wanna make sure, thank you. Absolutely, yeah. Very good question. That that is not only relevant to elected members, it happens in office, happens in school, everywhere. You have to learn one thing, disagree, agree, and commit. These are the three things. You may, your opinion may not be in line with other two friends, but if you see that everybody, or you see there's a consensus on some idea, but it's not what you want, but you finally say, okay, I agree, or I commit, once you commit, don't say, man, this, this friend of mine did not agree to my thought and keep it behind your back, mine, and strike, okay, I'll get back at him. <laughs> then it won't work. That's how the team, you have to build the team by disagreeing, agreeing, and commit. Once you commit, forget about it and move on. That's America. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So next question. Uh, Mahesh, I have a question directly specific to you. So I was just wondering, since you work at Amazon, like when has this leadership in your job really like helped and benefited your career? See, basically very well said. If you, very good question. Amazon believes in a lot of leadership principles. One of the leadership principles that I just talked about is disagree, agree, and commit. Mm -hmm. Then the, there's other leadership principles like uh, trust is most of the most important. You have to have developed the trust. If you cannot develop trust, you cannot do anything in life. You have to develop a trust between any individual you talk to. Very important. And the third thing is customer obsession. Yeah. <laughs> we believe in that. And the fourth is bias for action. If you think, hey, the bottle is lying down there, it looks messy, you just pick it up and throw it in the garbage. You don't have to say, hey, maybe there's somebody else will come and pick up the bottle. That's called bias for action. So these are a lot of good leadership principles which you should build in yourself, inculcate, then you'll make a great individual. Thank you. Well, very good. So we have heard quite a few things, right? Have the courage when you face disagreement, what the, what the principle of all the leadership. There are so many other things, but we like to talk about is mentorship. Do you think mentorship for the youth is very important in community service? And what are different ways that kids can find mentor to do so? 
Okay, yes. Well, we've heard about Vision America, and in Fremont, we have a wonderful organization called CBC, Citizens for a Better Community, which has internships with some of our local legislators, our State Senator Wykowski, Ken Chu, Assemblymember uh, Bill Quirk. And what the mentorship is that you get to actually work in a legislative office and see how laws are made, or you're dealing with constituent services, and you see people that work there, and you learn how to be engaged in the community. It is important to learn. I think one of the things that has changed over the years because of our um, entrepreneurial spirit, there's some people that succeed very soon, very quickly, and we all think we're going to succeed the first time. When, when I was younger, when Mahesh was younger, we understood there was an apprenticeship. It took 5, 10, 15 years to really learn whatever you're doing. So you can lead, but you also have to listen and learn. And so being a good, having a good mentor is important, but being a good mentee is just as important in listening to what people, the wisdom that they can share with you. Yeah, absolutely. Just to add to him, you, for, first of all, it's very important for any individual, for, especially for your kids, to find one mentor in life. One mentor is good enough. But that mentor has to be with you till, till ever. You know, that is very key. It can be maybe Dinah Ding, you know. She's an amazing community person. <laughs> maybe you guys tell, I, I want you as my mentor. I know she's mentoring a lot of kids. Oh, yeah? She's a wonderful okay. mentor, by the way. I'm sure you'll find like this. I don't know other names in your community, but you, she can advise you. Hey, I'm busy, but why don't you go and talk to this person? Find one good mentor, because that mentor who has the experience in the line that you like, he can, or he or she can guide you. That's very important. If you don't have a mentor, you'll be lost, and you know it is hard work. So that's very important. Okay, very good. So let me ask the kids. So can we just talk about? You can have internship. You can have mentors. So any of you maybe can tell me what your imaginary best mentor could be. Could be David or Mahesh here. So who can answer this question for me? Is that a tough question? Okay, you try. So, it actually, I believe it depends on different people. Some people have better intuitions, and it, it's really just depending on uh, the person to find the perfect mentor for themselves, whether the person likes to learn hands-on, or whether uh, the person just likes to listen to other people's viewpoints and contemplate it by themselves. So, it just depends on the person themselves, whether or what kind of mentor they want to find, and it's their, it's their job, it's their task to find a perfect mentor for themselves. How about you, specifically? What, what do you think? I personally really, really uh, would enjoy having a mentor that is more hands-on, uh, because that's the way I learn, uh, very personal to myself. And that would be the perfect mentor uh, for me, who can lead me through activities and uh, directly show me what to do. And I don't necessarily want to like replicate exactly what other people do, but I can, uh, through seeing other people's actions, I can learn. I believe I can learn a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So next question, I think, for both of you is um, for the kids. Okay, they look up to the mentors. Sometimes it's very hard to identify who should be the right mentor for them. So do you have any tips? How do you think the kids, some of the fearless kids, they can find mentors easily, some of them a little bit shy. So do you have any tips for them to find the right mentor? Yeah. So it's, it's a very important that the mentee should be very comfortable with the mentor. Whoever you select as your mentor, you have to be very comfortable that and you feel good about it. You trust the mentor, mentor trusts the mentee. Because that's a very important relationship in India. We say guru, guru chela. Uh -huh. You know, that is being taught like there is no books, nothing written. It's all word of mouth, right? Uh, and that's how you have to develop that relationship. And, and it need not be that you are interested in computer science, you select a mentor who is a politician. But you just, it doesn't have to be that you are interested in computer science, or it has to be computer science. Uh, like a prof, I want a professor. Not necessarily, because professor will be busy. So you have to find a person who has time for you. That's most important, I think. If the person has time for you, you are good for it. Okay, sounds good. So we have limited time, so let me ask the kids to uh, ask your question. Um, um, how do you 
For example, like create any ideas for your leadership programs or like create ideas for your jobs that you have? Well, one of the things about the internships that I'm aware of, like with Senator Wykowski or Assemblymember Kansen Chu or uh, Quirk, is that they have a structure for you. They teach you how to do constituent services, how to write a letter. If somebody uh, needs some, some help from the government, then you're taught how to call somebody. So there are ways of learning how to, to be more productive and to help people in the community. There's ways when you're volunteering uh, for this wonderful uh, nonprofit in Fremont that we used to, I used to be on the board for called Abode Services, where we feed the hungry and house the homeless and build places for them. We have shelters. So when you go there, I guess I love to Mahesh's comment, it's the bias towards action. See what is needed to be done and do it. So that's part of the leadership. I also wanted to commend all of you in this room because what is unstated is I think virtually all of you, if you're not born here in this country, you are first generation Americans. And I, uh, my father was here, my grandparents came here, but you're already leaders for learning how to assimilate in a larger society, bridging between whether you're Indian or Chinese to this country. You hear languages spoken at home, whereas you have kids that have been here many generations, all they hear is English. So the ability to understand different cultures and to navigate in this culture is a leadership activity. So you already have some skills and resources that you may take for granted that should hold you in good stead and, and position you for being connected to the rest of the world. So you should be congratulated for that. Thank you for the comment. Next question. Uh, so could you explain the value of commitment and sacrifice in being a successful leader? <laughs> See, the civic work, the community work, sometimes I say selfless and thankless. <laughs> you know, you're doing it because of something uh, good, it's the upper good. You don't have to, you should not expect people to come and say, hey, you did a good job. <laughs> you know, that's your duty. That's, if, you, if you can break away from that thankless thing, you'll do amazing community work. One of the aspects of leadership, uh, I've not demonstrated it here, you know, I'm doing a lot of talking, but sometimes simply showing up is an act of leadership. Mm -hmm. And I can give you an example. When I got appointed to the council, I'd been involved, as I said, in the activity. I had a, a wonderful woman that has Learning Bee in Fremont. We were friends. She helped me uh, with some of my nonprofit work. But she had an open house, and I came back as a council member with my tag on, and she was just ecstatic that I was there because it honored her. We talked about being honorable. So you are doing a service, public service, simply by showing up because you place value on what they're doing. And I think that you never underestimate that. If you're there for even uh, what we were hearing with Grace, showing up for her uh, patient that's handicapped, that is a form of leadership by being present. And so I think don't underestimate that. And I really appreciate you being here today with well, this many kids. Uh, I think we still have one more question, right? So my uh, topic addresses an uh, earlier point. So uh, I agree with uh, Mahesh that civic duty is very good and we all should have civic virtue. But at the same time, I feel that uh, the idea of having a, a community service partly is because of governmental failures to address some of the social programs. And in a more conservative uh, ideology, uh, the government is unable to solve many of the social programs. So, but I'm not that pessimistic. So my question is, how should uh, civic leaders, uh, people who do service, and uh, government leaders uh, cooperate together to address social issues? Very good question. And it's a very tough question to answer. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best, and maybe my esteemed colleague can take it from there. See. It, it, it is, a, in the sense, as a civic, uh, you being aware of what are the issues, local. See, okay, let me go back. There are global issues, there are national issues, and there are local issues, right? And for me, it's about being local is the most important piece. Where I live, who are my neighbors, is there a robbery there, or is there a, the roads are potholes on the road? I think that's a local issue. So that local issue, you address it 
the way you need to address it if the city council member is not really paying attention <laughs> you go and say hey Dave, we elected you and there's uh, robberies in my neighborhood what do you do about it that's one thing then the second the bigger issue is about the economy or the jobs and other stuff that's a different issue the way you take it is to the congressman right that this is how you filter out and focus on the job because you don't have so much time you have to study you have to do this you have to identify and prioritize what is the most dearest and the closest thing to your heart and focus on that the 10 things you can do but you can't do that so identify which is closest to your heart and address them i think this goes against the grain of what you see oftentimes in politics but my mantra is to under promise and over deliver okay and what that means is we had recently in Fremont a study session on homelessness. It's gotten very bad very quickly. Because of the higher uh, cost for rent, higher cost for housing, people are being displaced on our streets in Fremont. It's happening throughout the Bay Area. So suddenly we had to uh, take $750,000 in our surplus money to deal with the problem, to hire a few new more people in the city so that it would take less resources away to, uh, from our police department was responding, but to identify the problem. And when we were talking about it, we were all asked to comment on the situation. Was it, it was humbling because we can't solve it. But what we can do is have a conversation with our community about ways we can make it better on the margins. So I think that what happens is there's cynicism when you hear people say, well, we're going to solve it, it's simple, it's easy, and then they can't keep their promises. I think the way that you engage and have a conversation with people is saying, these are our limitations. We don't have unlimited resources, but this is what we can do. How do we prioritize resources? It's not as sexy, it's not as glittery, but that's the way you build leadership with credibility, with consistency, with follow through, with setting metrics, and meeting those goals. And so that. Yeah. How did it come to your radar that there's a lot of homeless people out there? Well, suddenly uh, there were people in the community. People they there. were taking pictures on Facebook and sending it to staff. There was somebody that was lying in the middle of a restaurant that just uh, and sent it to the mayor and to the rest of us. And yeah. so suddenly there was this, and then there were these camps that were formed uh, near railroads, near Sequoia Commons in Fremont and elsewhere near our upscale residential homes, suddenly there was some open areas where people that were homeless were encamping. It never happened before. So uh, suddenly we were getting a lot of pressure from the community, do something, do something, do something. And so we're starting to do something, but again, we can't wave a magic wand and solve it overnight. This is how you, when you see an issue, maybe four or five of you send an email to the mayor or That's the right. city council member with a photograph, you are, your voice will be heard. Nobody will ignore it. Yes, I think our time is up. Thank you. I, thank we just you. got into a very uh, interesting discussion. Thank you very much for the panel, and thank, thank you for the you. students to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.